Hey everyone! A few weeks ago I did a show and tell video where I showed you some stuff I'd gotten, including this Godzilla blanket right here, and two Godzilla CDs, and I floated the idea out there that I'd like to try reviewing the CDs if anyone would be interested in that, and a few of you said yes, definitely, and that was all the encouragement I needed. <laughs> so today I'm going to review one of the CDs, The Best of Godzilla 1984 to 1995, and fair warning, um, I don't want to get in trouble with copyright stuff, so I'm gonna try to get creative. I'm not sure how I can pull off a CD review without playing much or any of the music on the CD, but, well, we'll see how it goes. Um, this might be terrible, but if nothing else, I hope it's at least funny. <laughs> So here's the CD, here's the front, if I can not blind you with the glare, and here's the back, which I think this is Godzilla from Return of Godzilla, although I confess I am not very good at determining which suit comes from which movie, which design comes from which movie. I think this is Return of Godzilla? And you dare to call yourself a Godzilla fan now? I know, it's terrible. I'm learning. It comes with this little booklet, as every good CD should, and it includes write-ups about the music and its composers, so that's good reading. The CD makes the very smart choice of kicking things off with the main Godzilla theme from Godzilla vs. King Ghidra. It is the ideal start to a CD of Godzilla music. Of course you want to start with the Godzilla theme, and it sounds great. It's got a huge brassy sound and cymbals that seem to go on forever. I will say this, for the first, I don't know, year or so that I was doing the Godzilla review series, I had trouble trying to figure out what is the Godzilla theme? What is the Godzilla march? Because, to my way of thinking, there were a couple different themes that were associated with him, and when I tried to get a clear answer from the internet, I got different results. And it didn't help that one of the results was this track, which has both of the themes. There's the one that I associate with the original 1954 film. And then there's the other one, which I'm 95% sure came along later. This song has both, so I guess when people refer to the Godzilla theme, it's all one song. <laughs> it's just... Which part of the song are you talking about? The march has a slightly slower, more stately tempo in this rendition. Ba da dum, ba da dum, bum, bum, bum. And it plays through twice, which is a little funny. When I listened to the CD the first time, I thought maybe I'd accidentally hit repeat for the first track because it does the bum, 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 bum. Those are the symbols. <laughs> That's not how you play the symbols. And then it goes through the march, and then it does it again. Ba 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 ba. So I was a little confused. From there, the CD goes in chronological order with the movies. They just wanted to start off with the signature music to set things up, and I totally approve of that decision. Tracks two through six are the Return of Godzilla suite. Track 2 is the opening titles music, and I loved this music in the film the very first time I saw it, and that was before I saw the movie. I saw the opening titles, oh, I don't know, a couple of weeks or a couple of months before I saw the movie, and I loved it. The visuals were great, and they were accompanied with this full dramatic music. It was a great first impression and just helped me be even more excited to watch the movie. It then transitions into a faster paced section, kind of like chase music, but it isn't. Track three starts out sounding like what I refer to as victory music. Honestly, the themes for the weapons in the Godzilla movies, Super X3 in this case, have always taken a back seat for me compared to the monsters themes. The militaristic themes are fine, but I don't find them as memorable or as distinct. Maybe because they're not as intense and dramatic. I like intense and dramatic film music. But the upbeat, even patriotic sound does fit for the idea of the military rallying and putting out a brave defense. So I have no complaint with it, it just doesn't stick in my memory as much 
These aren't the songs that typically get stuck in my head. Track 4 also has that stirring, optimistic army march sound. I remember there was a lot of this music in the movie. Track 5 is titled Godzilla's Exit, and I can't exactly remember where in the movie this music plays, but it is lush and a bit sad, with echoes, I think, of the first verse of the love theme that plays over the end credits, also known as Goodbye Godzilla, the weirdly out of place song that I complain about, sort of, during my review of this movie, but that I totally got stuck in my head and sang often for over a year now, and I actually wish was included on this CD, because I really like that song. I don't like so much the pop version of it, I like the version that's in the movie, even though it's shorter. Anyway, never say that a Godzilla movie can't have romantic music. And this segues right into track 6, which is the ending music, the music for Godzilla's death scene. This is my most favorite part of the Return of Godzilla soundtrack because it's just so powerful. The sense of melancholy and longing is amazing. I never would have expected a Godzilla movie to have such powerful music, and I love the way it builds at the 44 second mark and again at 110, and the addition of piano and those gorgeous strings just takes it to the next level. Track 7 through 9 is the Godzilla vs. Biolanti suite, and as I mentioned before when I showed you these CDs, I think I mentioned it, I hadn't realized what a beautiful score Godzilla vs. Biolanti had when I watched the movie, so it was the biggest surprise on the CD. Track 7 is the Scramble March. I don't know why it's called that, but it's charming. And I say it's charming because of the subdued nature in the beginning with these plucking strings and uh, muted trumpets. But then it builds, and it gets bigger, and I like it more every time I listen to it. With so much fanfare and flourishes, it sounds... there's almost something regal about it, and I don't remember that in the movie at all. <laughs> Track 8 is Bio Wars, which I do remember from the film, or at least I remember part of it. The rock music rendition of the Godzilla theme definitely caught my attention, not in the most favorable way. I thought it was pretty cheesy, especially with what was going on in the movie. However, this is another track that keeps growing on me. There is lots of wailing electric guitar and synthesizer, I'm pretty sure, but it also has some strong orchestrations and cool violin runs and jazzy horns. <laughs> And then, after being this high-energy 80s-ish song, at 2 minutes and 10 seconds, it grinds down, changes gears, and takes on a 70s groove with lots of lower brass and some bass. It's got that wukka 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 sound, and or something like that. Plus some Latin flair with a trumpet. Track 9 is titled Ending, and it's another track that sounds like victory, but it's not bombastic or aggressive. Then at the 2 minute 15 second mark, it starts to remind me a lot of either the Superman theme or music from an old Star Trek movie. And I'm pretty sure I said this in my review of Godzilla vs. Biolanti. It's especially what's going on in the brass section. Ba 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 Here's Superman just for a cross reference. Ba 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 So it's not the same thing, but you get what I'm saying? The Star Trek resemblance is a little harder to pinpoint. I guess I'm thinking of Star Trek 2 because I'm more familiar with the music in Star Trek 2 than the music of any of the other ones with the original series cast. But, uh, but it's not just one instrument or section. It's, it's what's going on with the French horns and what's going on with the strings and what's going on with the percussion and just the whole feeling of it all really reminds me of that music. I especially like the big finale at 
4 minutes 18 seconds where the rest of the orchestra is galloping away into space and above that there is this soaring line of triplets bum, 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 bum. it just sounds like an 80s space movie doesn't it i think it's safe to say that i was indifferent to the godzilla vs. biolanti score before i got the cd but now these tracks are a highlight for me Tracks 10 through 12 is the Godzilla vs. King Ghidra suite, minus the Godzilla March because they already did that. Track 10 creates a pretty dark mood with some frantic energy. It's more percussive with some heavy cymbal and gong action and huge brass. Track 11 is music for King Ghidra's attack, and it has some great stuff going on with the piano's lower register, plus some bells and other things. And that quickly moves into track 12, where Japan's going on the offensive, I guess, based on the music, which features a repetitive trumpet melody, not unlike what Akira Ifukube was doing for military music in the first film. Tracks 13 through 17 is the Godzilla and Mothra Battle for Earth suite. Track 13 is the main title and it starts off with Godzilla's main theme at a quicker tempo, then it transitions into something else, and if I remember correctly, this is when Mothra is sighted. It's kind of spooky and dramatic, incorporating a darker version of the Mahara Masuda theme, and we get the full vocal version of that song in track 14. Mahara Masura is not my favorite of the Mothra songs, but I like it well enough. Track 15 is titled Mesa March, and again, it has strong similarities to Ifukube's other offensive militaristic themes. Track 16 is titled Rolling Title Ending, and I love it. One of the few disappointments I have with the CD is that the Sacred Springs track from the movie wasn't included. That was my favorite scene in the movie, and I love the rendition of the song, which first debuted in 1964's Mothra vs. Godzilla. But I will definitely take this as second best in its absence. It's a mostly instrumental Sacred Springs. There are vocals, but it's just a lot of ahs, and it's very lovely. Oh, and then track 17 is a pop version of Mothra's song, composed by Yuji Koseki. Um, it does sound very early 90s, but it's fun, and I can sing along with it to the best of my ability, which isn't that great. This version features additional lyrics, a key change, and some new instrumentation, which is pretty obvious when you listen to it. Tracks 18 and 19 is the Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla 2 suite. Track 18 is the main title, and at first it sounds like it's going to be another rendition of the Godzilla March, but it isn't, and it has some really great drums and nice trilled blasting from the horns. Flutter tonguing? Is that what it is? I seem to remember that from band class. Bum, 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 bum. I don't know if it's flutter tonguing or if they're just blasting violently into the instrument. And track 19, G Force March number one, is another very Ifakube military march. Tracks 20 through 24 is the Godzilla vs. Space Godzilla suite, and I was surprised that there were so many tracks included from this movie since it did not initially strike me as having one of the best, most memorable scores. Track 20, the prologue slash main title, starts with a very different sound, heavily synthed and otherworldly. It then transitions into a march that alternates between being upbeat and intimidating, and this track includes a Godzilla roar, which could be a little startling if you're listening to this as background music. <laughs> then at 123, a new section begins, and here's where the music takes on shades of the Poseidon Adventure theme for me. Um, I'm pretty sure that I mentioned this in my review of Godzilla vs. Space Godzilla, and I don't think that anybody commented on it, which um, tells me either I was way off, or my reference was too obscure, which is totally possible. Anyway, I like this part. Track 24 
track 21 titled Bass Island is so pretty. I'm guessing this is the part where Mickey arrives on the island and sees Godzilla Jr. I love the layers in this song and the music conveys a sense of beauty and wonderment and it's really great. And then it ends with a section of tropical drums, which is interesting. Track 22 is fight music for Mogera vs. Mechagodzilla. And it's fine, but it's not... It's not the most pleasant thing to listen to. The same goes for track 23, which is similar, but with a little more feeling of we're taking charge of this situation now. The suite ends with track 24, titled Crystal, which is another very pretty and rich track. It's solemn and a little mournful. It's especially good, I think, when the pensive oboe solo comes in at the 3 minute 30 second mark. I can't figure out exactly where this fits in with the movie itself, but nice music is nice music, and this is really pretty. So as much as I felt like, hmm, why did Space Godzilla get so much attention on this CD, I do really like three of the five tracks. I basically could do without the two Mogera tracks. Tracks 25 through 29 is the Godzilla vs. Destoroya suite, which features some of my favorite music in the entire franchise. 25 starts out with a huge timpani roll, some even huger lower brass, and I think there's a bassoon in there too, and more banging on drums. Then there's a new, ultra deep rendition of the Godzilla March, which is great entrance music for burning Godzilla with the rhythm slightly altered. Bum, 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 and then the two minute mark is my other favorite part, the harp, which is beautiful and what a crazy idea to combine this really deep guttural brass with the harp sound as it just kind of that's not what harps sound like. And then upper brass takes over with what I think of as the Destoroya theme, this staccato bop 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 oh, It's just an awesome way to start the movie. Track 26 is, hey, another military march. It might be one of the ones I like the best, but maybe that's because I've listened to this whole suite so many times. Track 27 is another military march, The Freezing Attack, and it's followed by the highly anticipated Requiem, Track 28. Ugh, there's so much I could say about the Requiem. First of all, that opening. What is that instrument? I don't think it's a harp. I don't think it's some kind of guitar. It's almost like someone's strumming the strings of a piano. I don't know, but it's awesome. <laughs> the Requiem might be one of the compositions I've listened to the most of all the Godzilla music. It takes an already great movie to another level, with that opening, whatever it is, the harp, the layers of richness and emotion, the female vocalist, in case you weren't feeling sad already, <laughs> and then those chords at the 1 minute 50 second mark. And it's so good, it goes through it twice. It's a great piece, a beautiful end to a surprisingly emotional movie, and one of my favorite tracks on the CD, and one of the chief reasons why I wanted to own it. It's followed by the ending title on track 29, which is still one of my favorite renditions of the Godzilla theme, due to its quick tempo and its instrumentation, and as a bonus, at the 1 minute 20 second mark, it makes a smooth transition into the main theme from King Kong vs. Godzilla, which is amazing and drives the energy up even more. This is a track that demands to be listened to on full volume, and then it ends in a big finish with more harp and more bells, and it's just like, ah. and it is one of several reasons why Godzilla vs. Destoroya is one of my favorite Godzilla movies. But that's not the last track on the CD. Track 30 is a pop version of the Monster Zero March. Honestly, I'd have been happy if the CD ended with the ending titles from Godzilla vs. Destoroya. I did find this track a little goofy at first. It's got kind of a polka rhythm. Plus there are sound effects, Godzilla and Ghidra's roars, UFO sounds, artillery fire, stuff blowing up. So that makes it a little noisy and chaotic. But, you know, I've listened to the CD all the way through enough times now that I've gotten used to it and even embraced this quirky track. 
Overall, I'm very impressed with the music selections and the broad range of styles, and the quality is great, allowing me to hear music cues and instrumentation that I didn't always pick up on just watching the films. I hope you enjoyed this video. Feel free to share your Godzilla music thoughts in the comments below. I will be doing another one of these for the King of the Monsters soundtrack soon, because if I don't, I'll end up spending a ridiculous amount of time talking about the music in my review for that movie, so you can look for that in the not-too-distant future. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching! Bye! Because it's not just about the string section, there's also, like, uh, triangles. <laughs> Yikes. Okay, sorry, I won't do that again. <laughs> That's too low. Whoa. Okay. <laughs> I don't know why I move my arms when I'm doing this. <laughs> Trying to make myself feel less awkward, I guess. I kind of hope nobody watches this video. It's embarrassing.